So even with these uh, other rocks in here, we'll be able to definitely tell if there is a vehicle or a pickup or a car of any sort in here separate from the rocks. I'll see if I can identify a name on here and look it up online. I am committing, I am going full speed. I'm just already thinking about the peacefulness of this area and the significance behind it. You don't put an end to this, this nightmare. Coming back into day two, searching for Robert Cavanaugh. He was 51 years old when he went missing December 24th of 2004. It was actually two days before when his wife last saw him around 7 p.m. on the 22nd, never to be seen again. Yesterday's search identified three vehicles in the water. We were able to dive on two of them. We're starting our morning because it was late last night when we found this third one. So we have two divers, Nick and Down Under Dan, in the water right now. They're gonna follow this line down, see what this vehicle is. It could be the truck in question we're looking for is a Mazda B2300 1996. This is one episode where we are hope that we're able to bring Robert home today. For families who have all but given up on finding their loved ones, this team is a last hope. Civilian divers cracking cold cases for free. Ten foot hole. Plenty deep though. It's not like a solid lock for me anywhere. So see you have consistency of like openness, openness, oh, yeah. openness. That's gotta be like a super old something. That's what metal looks like after it's been underwater for 20 years. That's like an old purse. And it's been down there a long time. I'm talking from the 50s. It's got those fins, right. bubble type lights, buried. I mean, you think a car or a book trailer? To me, it think? kind of looked like one of those covers over a truck. Yeah. And it was like sideways or something. We do have one vehicle that is upside down. We're not able to identify it, whether it is a truck or a car at the third boat ramp over there. So what I would like to do is let's start our morning uh, over there tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock uh, and we'll get Nick in the water to identify it. So where we're at this morning is starting off first, you know, right off the bat is right next to this bushy tree that's right on the riverbank edge. Two stones over, about 30 feet out, we have a vehicle that we identified late last night. Uh, it's upside down. We don't know if it's a truck. We don't know if it's a car. So we're going to suit up Nick as well as down under Dan. We're going to get them in the water first thing and we'll have answers in the next uh, you know 45 minutes or so from there if this is not what we're looking for then there's uh, two bodies of water on the way back towards mansfield that i would like to check out the middle bolton lake boat launch area and then there's the lower boat launch area in that lake as well and then i want to even though i feel as though it's too shallow in talking with jeff and even the aerials here for the bigelow it has importance, it has significance, so I want to make sure that we do clear that off so that way, you know, we as, you know, the team as well as for the family can say, yes, he had a strong, with his family, you know, that they would go there, but we want to make sure we rule everything out. Uh, so these are going to be our four starting points today, and then after Big Low, then we'll decide what needs to take place after that. Like the, after talking to the family yesterday, Lower Bolton, uh -huh. the house is around where the launch is. Yep. It's kind of like seasonal. And they're like, well, it happened in December, so it would make sense that that would be an area to search for. Yeah, and he's from the area, he knows it, so we don't want to rule that out. Okay. So we'll carry a boat into there and let's check that, both that's sides of it. the only problem in that area is you have to carry. Yeah, and that's why we use the small boats. And All right. So. All right, perfect. Well, let me get uh, these two suited up and I'm going to grab a magnet right now, start tossing it, and see if I can latch onto it just from the uh, shore right here.
So initially when we scanned it, I thought it was the fourth rock and then we rescanned it. And it seemed like it was the second rock closer to this bush. But now I question where it's really at. All right, there it is. We got it. Uh, How far up? Uh, this rope is 60 feet, yep. and I'm attached to it there, so 30 feet underwater right there. It's, you're like 15 to 20 feet deep right there, I think. Uh, Down Under Dan, if you guys have never met or heard of Down Under Dan, he has started a small uh, movement down in Australia is where he's from. He's also a, a police officer and has made his way up here to the U.S. to join us for a month to kind of see our techniques, the way that we think through these cases, the way that we uh, interact with the families, and the way that we do our searches. And then eventually, you know, within the next couple of weeks, Fingers crossed, we'll have a couple of recoveries to teach you some techniques as far as bringing vehicles out of the water. He's not new to vehicle recovery. He does have some uh, lift bags we sent him last year. And he's, uh, how many cars have you now recovered from the river? Uh, two. Okay. Two. And you're working three current missing persons cases yeah, right now. Yeah, we have three missing persons at the moment. Two in Tasmania. We've got a gentleman called Nick, who was an Alzheimer's uh, gentleman. And then you've got Taj in Victoria and a gentleman called Dale also in Tasmania. So we've got the three active cases that we're working at the moment. Well, perfect. So Dan also has his own uh, YouTube channel as well where he shares his you know journey along the way. We will put that link down in the description. So please do us a favor, support Down Under Dan and we just might be down there soon to join you on a couple of these cases. Look, and at this stage, I just want to quickly say thank you very much, Jared, for your inspiration. Yeah. You've now created this global movement. You know, you've got people who are passionate and talented at diving and now you have inspired us to go out and to actually go and uh, help families like this one here so that we can actually you know give them answers uh, even if it's just a case of well they're not here right even that makes the world of difference to, to these families so. and, you, and you've been with me for years i mean long before yeah. we even started doing this and you know like i always said you know this is entire movement it's not just a couple of guys in an rv you know getting together it's yep. an entire movement that's happening around the world so i appreciate Absolutely. you you know being a part of this with us and look the, the more people who do this the um, more answers we can get for family you know, we're not going to run our cars anytime soon. No. Uh, at the very least, we pull a few cars out, clean the environment, which was always one of our things. And so, yeah, thank you again, Jared, for your inspiration and letting me tag along with you over the, the next few weeks. Absolutely. Look we're forward to, you, uh, you know, helping Nick out today and getting the water. So thanks Absolutely. for being here. Be sure to check out that link down below. Support a good man for a good cause.
they go in and they stay down as long as they do it is I feel like I overused the word hopeful but I mean it's the it's the word you know I'm hopeful that they have the answers that we found the vehicle at least the family right here is waiting for and every minute every second that goes by it's like have they identified are they getting all the information they need for law enforcement that way they can report this properly for when law enforcement comes in for the extraction of it and we give them the breakdown as to what we found how we found it upside down right side up windows up windows down were we able to identify you know anybody inside uh, you know is there anything else that's sitting around are we able to see a you know a wallet or a license plate and in most circumstances you know we normally bring a license plate up if we're able to uh, find and locate one that way it's a positive identification for when law enforcement comes and uh, you know we're all holding our breath you know not just the divers underwater but me the entire family everybody here and at this time, I think they've been down for about five, six minutes now. And, you know, if it's not the vehicle, you know, normally we, we, would be up, we would be back up within two to three minutes. But yesterday, you know, Nick was down. It was, the you know, a blazer of some sort. It was also a hearse of some sort, an old 1950-something. And he was down. You know, he gathered all that information, leaving all of us in suspense similar to what we're doing right now. We're all in suspense waiting for them to come back up and let us know. Is today the day that we're bringing Robert home? the uh, head shake of this is not the vehicle we're looking for it looks like Nick has a uh, driver's license or some form of ID and uh, we'll get more of the story as to what vehicle it is we don't know if it's clear yet so we'll gather that information in a few minutes from Nick down and buried right. nothing that I could see as far as like any remnants of human remains or anything it's it's an older model uh, big yacht land yacht kind of thing right you know that's got the bumper that it's contours with the two things that stick out on it okay um, it's been down there a long time I'm gonna guess a lot longer than 20 years all right it looks like an, another 80s model, something. Right. Okay. 
I'll see if I can identify a name on here and look it up online, make sure we don't have another missing persons we're not. Yeah, expecting. just in case. That was it circled around as much as it could. That was about the only clue as far as But again, that could be somebody dropped one and it just ended up there. There's a lot of stuff down there. I'm talking a hundred golf balls, bottles, cans all around it. Like, you know, it's another major river that has a lot of debris. So so this could have just push into the car. Yeah, exactly. But since it was there, I grabbed it anyway. Okay. Just out of curiosity. Green dot. What is green dot around here? It could be something just pushed up into this one, so. Oh, yeah. So. We were seeing if we had anything we could identify to look up and see if there's a somebody else that might be missing. But there was nothing that was identifying on the vehicle, no license plate. It's upside down from uh, what Nick was saying. Um, so I'll get them up and out of the water and then we'll talk about uh, which uh, location we'll head to next and uh, keep moving down the list today. So my game plan is middle Bolton, is that right? Yep, middle Bolton. Mid middle Bolton, Lake uh, Boat Launch. I'd like to head there first okay. and then head down to the one that's in the residential neighborhood at the lower Bolton. Um, does he, do we know, has he ever gone there? Has he fished there? Does he have any relation to If he was traveling lake? to Harford, uh -huh. he'd have to go by there. Okay. He'd have to go right there to get to 384 to get to Harford. Okay. So on the way to work, he would have been there. Whether he fished there or not, it is a popular fishing area. Okay. And so with the family, does the family have any indication or know that he's ever fished at Lower Bolton? I used to fish there, but I don't remember. I can't remember. I don't remember. Fishing. Okay, so those are the first two spots I'd like to hit. Then I'd like to drop down six down to Mono Pond State Park. So I want to check that one because it's not, it's really not that far off the route of six. Okay. Well, from his house, yeah. yeah. And then, and then from Mono Pond, then we'll head up to a Bigelow from there, up six. Okay. Okay. Well, the boys are uh, almost unsuited, and well, let's go cover those four, and then. We'll figure it out from there. Okay. All right. Yeah, there's nothing there, unfortunately. And this one you can actually see on Google Earth when it's down, so. I remember I've seen people kayaking out here. They walk 30 feet out, so not up to their knees. Yeah, and, the, and, and on Google stuff. Earth, you could see this when it was drained and low, and then you have lily pads over here. Yeah, I, so that's less than six feet. Hundred times. Yeah, that's very shallow. That was deeper, but I wasn't. I didn't know this was the boat launch on this lake they're talking about. I know well, I wanted I wanted to put eyes on this one too, so like right. I never really think right. out of Christmas there. So I just want to give you my opinion, yeah but. for sure. But yeah, let's go to the, the uh, lower Bolton. Uh, right, rep now too. So for middle right here, yep. the campground's right there. Okay. That has a little beach where you can gain access to. Right. This launched nothing, and there was a fish kill here about ten years ago, so this was drained out. Okay. So hold on, let's come back to the boat launch over here. Boat, which is, boat launch is right here. We're this standing is, we're, here. Well, now, not, not, I want to come to the lower, lower Bolton now. All right. So lower Bolton right here. Yep. That's a straight shot in. Like I said, those are all seasonal. That's about 12 feet deep right there. Okay. And what, then there's a public beach on that side. Over the years, what's the lowest this has been drained down? This is not susceptible to it because that, that drains into this, which drains into that. So okay. this one always stays about the same. Okay, so we have eight to 12 feet here then that's always Yep, and there. then and the same thing back here, you have the little beach area and there's like rocks right here and residential and rocks on that side towards the dam. Yeah. Yeah, anything that's residential off of there, I'm not interested in. Same thing with the coming through the campground with a beach access. It's not going to be in okay. play for, you know, for somebody that's going to be checking out, we're using boat ramps yeah, on this that, one. Yeah, that one, it has uh, trees on each either side, okay. and it's a straight shot, so it's kind of secluded okay. until you get actually into the water. You have a couple houses facing the water, and these are all like seasonal. Okay, let's jump down to that one next. Okay. All right, awesome, I like that book. So this lower Bolton here 
is what Jeff was saying would be part of his route as he's going to work. So he's very much aware of this, whether he fishes here or not. I believe that one of the sisters says that, you know, from time to time they have fished over here before. One thing about this road here, Nick, is we're looking at, what, 300, 400 yards of just a straight shot. Like, this is the only one that we've been in the area so far that has just been like, I am committing, I am going full speed. This is a, in my mind, a Bill Simmons moment. At 51 years of age, I'm gassing it, and whatever happens, happens. And you could easily get up to full speed along this straightaway. Oh, you could probably end up, you know, 70, 75 yep. by the time you hit the water there. Yeah, so if you wanted to. And then in talking with Jeff, the, his co-worker, was saying that this residential neighborhood, we don't want is, you know, we're kind of confined in trees here, so it is kind of quiet. But he was saying that this residential area also is more seasonal, that these are second homes in here for some of the people. And being that we were talking December 22nd, 23rd, 24th ish. There's late, probably not a lot of people here. Yep, yeah, later in the evening. In the past, we had a couple very similar, a longer road, more speed, deeper water next to the dam. I'm feeling hopeful on this one as well. Um, you know, we just got done at the middle or the upper boat ramp way. Real easy for us to rule that one out because we can see the lily pads on that one, but this one, like... What's the depth on this one? 12 feet is what Jeff's book was saying. Yeah, 12 feet uh, to the right and the left. Yeah, and, and the depth doesn't change in this one, so it's always full on this one. All right, I want to see some depth. I don't have the depth I need here. Let's drop it off to five. Six. It's deep enough there, but now it's dropping off there. Not a location that we're gonna have it not this far out. All right, let's head over to the uh, side. I was so hopeful too at that ramp, but it was only. Three and a half feet out for 75 feet. See out here is where the 12 foot mark is at. Mm. You know, this is your uh, first time joining us as far as our sonar setup and what we're working with. We're working with a side imaging here. We normally set to, what we do is we set to 75, normally left and right of the boat. Anything that's black is water column. With the down imaging, same thing, anything that's black is water column. You kind of go off of the grid lines here to identify, you know, are your number here, 11 and a half feet, it's going to match up with 11 and a half feet. It's going to match up with roughly 11 and a half feet. We have 18, 36, 54, and 75 right and left. This is a picture in time, so you know we can scan back and we can see what we've gone over on either one of these. Whereas this one here is live. This is uh, from Garmin, so it's a live scope. We can actually see what's happening in real time. So as a fish swims by, you'll be able to see a fish, see a fish swim by. We really use this one, especially when we're over the top of a target, to really go around it and identify it. That way we're getting everything, um, not just a picture in time, but real time information.
Yeah, with the beach over here, I'm gonna guess it's gonna get a lot more shallower. Shallower than where we just came in at. Making it a nice swimming hole. three and a half feet deep here. It's a great city park for families and kids and those just looking to come and wade safely in the water here. So we're at two and a half feet right here. Where are we, 100, 120 feet offshore? So we'll head back to the dam, scan the dam, and we'll scan the boat ramp more before we make a final decision on this one. It's a real easy read on the bottom here. As we're coming across the dam, you can see like the larger rocks there. You can see the larger rocks here. You can see the different weeds and brush underneath. And something over there, but that's not big enough. Now it's coming up, now it's too shallow again. But we'll take it over to the uh, left over there of the boat ramp and see if we can identify anything over there and then do one more pass coming back this way just to give us a little further distance out back into the deeper water again. You know, when we get back to the shore, I want to talk to Jeff also. Take a look at his little book there about Bigelow State Park. I want to see what the water depth is over there. All right, so we found the 12 foot hole Everything from here, roughly 125 feet out, it's three and a half, four feet, which was way too far for it to be able to carry, but then we got into the eight foot water uh, as well. Nothing out there. Um, what I'm interested in, while well, you've got this open, uh, mon Bigelow and Mono. Uh, mono yeah. I have marked too for you. So Mono right throughout the boat launch is the deepest part. Shallow for the rest and no access. Do we know if this one, does this one fluctuate at all? Do we know? I haven't fished it, so I don't know okay. how bad it is. It's right off the 66, so. Okay, well we have a deep enough hole that, you know, is a potential. That, yeah, that, that's the only spot there. And like I said, if you want to look at Bigelow, that's Bigelow right there. All right, so off of Bigelow, we're not getting out to nine until there. So we're running three to six. Yep. And nine to there. And I don't think there's any other. Any access, access. off of here? That it, That's all guardrail right there. The road is right on top of it. Okay. You're talking, it's a, it's a sharp embankment going down and then it comes back up right okay. where that dam is. Well, let's not rule this one out. What's our, that's 200 feet. Or, oh, that's 200 feet. Yeah, I mean, I would rule it out just by looking at it, but we don't want to take it off because of the significance to Bigelow. What else do we have in the area? This would have been probably the best part in this area right here. Is the, I would guess this, like I said, middle and upper I wouldn't consider, but I think this, that's pretty much it. it we, we're wondering about the where, where we were at Mansfield, how they had the reservoir behind there, but that's private. I don't know if we'd be allowed on that. Which one Which one are we talking about? Or, uh, where we, so we're at, at Mansfield. Mansfield, you had the dam, and it comes back down, and it goes into a reservoir, and I don't know how to get the access to the reservoir, and I can't remember because they have two steel gates blocking off access to it. Okay. Not not down by the dam you're talking about? Yeah, past, past, the, dam. Yeah, past, past the, dam. the dam. That's the place I always... Where the farm is on, at on the back side? Yeah, if you go on uh, the back side, if you keep on going down, like when we're on 195 going towards Route 6, you'll see it on the left side. And it has, uh, what does it say, WWW on yeah. it? Yeah, on the hillside. On the hillside. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this was the other one that was in question too. Um, back behind your solar panels, right? Yep, yeah, exactly. That's the one we're talking about. Okay. That's exactly it. It, it. it had two gates on either side, so you can't get in. So back in 2004, what did it have? That's what we're trying to 
that's I can't remember those gates ever being there. I I I used to drive by there all the time. Okay, so this is what's the name of this lake at all? Norton Norton Reservoir. Yeah. Okay, so what we need to do then is we just need to identify where we can drop a boat in at and then we can get to any portion of the lake that we need to. And so this is now our new closest location to his residence, right? Yeah. Yeah. With with a boat ramp. So there's our boat ramp right there. Yeah, it's shallow right off the get-go, but it could get deeper right there. Okay, so when you reference this of a place that he would go, what would he go here for? For fishing? Fishing. Yeah, fishing. And do we know where at he would go fishing here, or he just went here fishing? That I don't. He just talked about fishing up there. And I know, like I said, the dam that you were yesterday, that's mm -hmm. where he used to go kayaking all the time and fishing. Okay, so we need to identify how to get into this body of water where he would go fishing over in this area. So when there's a there's a gate at that, and then it's kind of like a hillside. I mean, you could walk on the property, but I'm sure we'll get trespassed pretty quick. Right. But up up towards the dam, I'm not sure if there's access because it's pretty pretty shallow north of that. Mm-hmm. We were at the dam yesterday. It was. Let, let me grab my computer. I want to pull up the uh, Google Earth of this real quick and see what it looked like in 04. Okay. So I'll be right back with that. And so what we have is we have in 2002, the water treatment facility was smaller. And then in 2005, you know, the completion of it was a lot larger. What I'm not seeing on this is, you know, access into the lake so when he would come to this lake where would he actually park to go fishing you know water treatment facilities have always been buttoned down they've always had you know gates so based upon that information and no other access around here for any vehicle to get in right now there's nothing we can do on that one nor would i even suggest it but now that now there's a gate is what you're saying. So we yeah. we're trying to identify if there's a gate in 2002. Mm. So we, I have I have a map for 2002 and I have a map for 2005. So during the time he went missing, this part was completed by 2005 or construction. So now do we simply have construction gates that were there or no gates at all because they were doing construction? I mean, if we can figure out how to get in there, I mean, more than happy to scan it. Let's go hit mono, um, despite the, Just the boat launch area, so. yeah, the boat launch area, because I mean, it does go down to nine something right there. And then we'll make our way back up into Mansfield on our way up to Bigelow to double check that one. But let's go put eyes on the gate there, as well as just a little bit to the north there with the field that the hey, town if you owns. Can't get on, hand me your magnet, I'll jump the fence, I'll beg for getting this. Well, we'll need more than a magnet on that one, but... It's not, I don't think it's as far across as you think. All right. Yeah. It looks deep, but it doesn't seem that far across. Okay. All right, yeah, let's uh, go with that plan then. So let's go hit Mono, and then we'll jump back up here to Mansfield. All the way out. I don't know if there's any other places on the lake that you could get to, but when I was looking at the bathymetry chart, say, uh, it looks shallow. Yeah, you can see the bottom right here. Yeah, super clear water. You can see weeds all the way across. So. Yeah, you can see them there, 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 uh -huh. there, there. Yeah, there's no reason to put a boat in here. Uh-uh. All right, let's head up into uh, Mansfield at that other location then. Standing up higher, you can see the weeds all the way across right here. It's only a few feet deep. So let's head up to the uh, water treatment plant and see if we can identify anything there to get us across the field and get us into that area over there. And so, uh, Canute just called me, you know, and what I was going over with him is, we have the no public access on the field right here. We clearly have a gate. It's a Sunday. Can you get around 100%? Is it out of the question that, it, you know, Bob ended up here? Absolutely not. We can't rule this out. Um, so, but I am in the area today. We only have a few hours left. And this is, would be a location, if I didn't do it, it's going to continue to weigh on all of us until I come back or you're able to figure out how to get in there. 
So we're gonna do everything we can to get in there. Uh, Knut just dropped me a location pin as to where he's at that he feels like we can, there's a path that we can get a boat down to the river. If there's any um, shallow sections, we got boots, we can you know, run our way down through there. So um, let's head up just a little bit to the north here to where he's at and let's do everything we can to get a boat into here and we're gonna have a solid answer on this location for you as well, so. All right, four feet through here, too shallow. Lily pads, as I was talking about before, they won't be any more than six feet tall in length. And it's four and a half feet right here. So anytime you see lily pads, just know that it's, unless you're looking for a very shallow car, you're not going to find it where lily pads are at. And our next access point off of this field is coming up right here. And we're nine feet of water here, so. Location is definitely in play here. I'll uh, show you on the side scan what it is I'm capturing here. So we have a lot of uh, a lot of rocks down there. Nothing that indicates a vehicle. Everything's very consistent. Right here, where the uh, two treatment ponds were at, and they put two more up there. And then they have some new solar panels over here as well. Still 13 feet, plenty deep. So even with these uh, other rocks in here, we'll be able to definitely tell if there is a vehicle or a pickup or a car of any sort in here separate from the rocks and the boulders are in here because we end up having like a lot of flat bottom but they're sporadic and sp spread out and you can see like triangle marks on them and versus what a vehicle will look like and just beyond the solar panels up here is where the road in question that the family was talking about comes straight in now we have a bunch of cattails and reeds there so I would feel like that right there is a little less likely but nothing's out of the question until we clear it all all right no vehicle there i'll scan a little bit further out in case it was a full on hit at the high speeds from up there. The way that you would have to get in there is you have the highway up there right there next to the hospital. Although the gate is there and I'm assuming that it was there in 2004, you can easily get around those rocks on the upper side. He has a pickup truck so it's not anything that is out of the question. this one I gotta go you know it, it's one of those things for what's going through my head is like I have to go tell the family the news of we've cleared it but we've not found your brother and so both of those things are difficult you know and that we want to tell the family that we found their lost loved one but at the same time we don't want to tell them that we found their lost loved one. So the news is always difficult because everybody, again, is looking for, is today the day that we can finally, you know, put an end to this, this nightmare. Uh, report, no vehicle. 
the uh, we checked everything from the uh, where that farm field is at all the way down to the dam uh, it goes from 8 feet to 18 feet you know and it's a fairly you know significant quick drop off there um, very hopeful you know when we hit that area and just the way it laid out but again unfortunately we just don't yet have a vehicle we've not yet found Bob so uh, we'll get the boat in the trailer and let's head up to Bigelow and make that our uh, last stop unless we have something else today that you guys can think of. In one quarter mile, turn right on Bedland Road. Hmm. I mean, it drops off fairly quick right here. I see a little bit of foliage there, but we we might get some depth in here. Okay. Yeah, the channel is not going to get out to. The farthest the vehicle is going to make it is kind of where that red leaf is at. For a pickup truck, that's going to be our farthest location here. Another launch? Okay. Is the other one deeper? Okay. Not off of the road, but actually on the park here? Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, we'll just put the boat in here and run both of them then. I mean, it looks like it drops down. It looked, it got darker, so. Yeah, so if you go right to the edge, but that, like I said, how yeah. far could you go off of here? Right. The, the road, it's like a steep decline right on the road, so there's got to be accidents there all the time. Okay. Yeah, we'll check uh, all those locations in. All right. All right, thank you. Yep. Um, Knut was saying there's another body of water just to the north of here. Do you have a map on that one for the depth? Yes, uh, put it in there. Yeah, you're very shallow all the way through there. I don't know if there's any roads around it, like on the back side. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right, yeah, let's play with this one here. So I'm just already thinking about the peacefulness of this area and the significance behind it. It's almost like I'm coming into it with a reference. You can see the bottom here for the weeds. We're at five feet here, it says. I don't think that's right. And you can see them right there. As much foliage as here, we have to do a scan a little bit different on this one, Nick and really go over each section of it because the side scan is going to hide a lot of waters that we could potentially have. Yeah, right in this cove, it just gets thick. Something like that, especially this area would be especially useful with the uh, magnetometer. All right, nothing big is sticking out there. Let's head around the corner and go check this uh, other boat now. There is no other boat around. There's a picnic area here. East Ridge Parking Trailhead. That's where we're heading to right now. And then right here, is where we put in on that road. Yeah, he thought we were over. Yeah, there, there's no boat ramp we over here. To go around that there's the road over there. There's nowhere to get a vehicle off of there where the parking lot is at there, Nick. So let's head down where the dam is at down there, where you see the road down there. It's supposed to drop off to a 15 foot hole down there.
13 feet in here. A lot of uh, trees and clean bottom. I just don't see with that guardrail there coming in from Google Earth. It looked like you could come in over here, but there's way too much uh, vegetation and then it gets too shallow before it gets deep. Yeah, we're still at 13. It's coming up, coming up, comes up quick. Nothing there. Yeah, no vehicle in here. I mean, it's such an easy read on this, Nick. Yeah, I was looking at that. I mean, you can't mess. Yeah, yeah. Can't mess this up at all. We'll do one more pass a little bit further out here. Doesn't get any cleaner than that, does it? So what we'll do is let's focus on this um, bank over here because that's where some of the campsites and day use areas are at. There might be, you know, like a certain site that he would use that he might be able to, you know, know that it was a little bit deeper over here. So we'll just follow that all the way back up to the uh, boat ramp and make sure we clear this area properly. We do not have a vehicle here. There's a reverence to this entire place. You know, as we're coming to, we've ran out of places to look on this. Knowing the significance of this for him, you know, us being parents and, you know, ourselves. The entire boat ride out there was different than every other location that we've been searching the last two days for me. And for me, I come in with the hopes of being able to give you and your family the answers that, you know, you've been looking for. And when we come to the end, you know, it's a disappointing for, for you and, you know, for you, Mary and Patty and uh, Marianne, uh, Ma Maureen, that I, that I wish that we could give every family the answer of bringing home their lost loved one. But we also hang our hat on that we have given you so many answers the last two days as well. Um, so, you know, we're going to put the information out here that, you know, your brother has not been forgotten, you know, and that if anybody in the area, you know, especially the fishermen, I mean, I saw a lot of fishermen on your lakes up here more so than other areas of the country. And most of them all had, you know, side scan or down imaging uh, sonar on their boats. And so we want to spread that awareness for the fishermen that are out here. If you see a vehicle, you know, make sure that you bring it to our attention. Send us a, an email support at dimensionswithpurpose.com. We'll have that link in, in the description down below. Uh, Mansfield is the one that has the case as well for the local police department. You know, and so reach out to them as well with any tips or any information you have. You know, we, you know, we're, we're dealing with the pain of not being able to continue with, you know, whatever burdens he had that he felt like he couldn't get through, and it's unfortunate and when i do come into these as well as you know it's always heavy on the entire team because we opened up 
feelings within your family also that we know that you've you know you've been able to compartmentalize and move forward these past 18 19 years and with that you know again I want to express our gratitude and appreciation for allowing us to share your story and we do hope that you know by doing so somebody's going to be like I remember I was out fishing I do remember seeing a vehicle you know rather than just it being a good fishing spot that we'll be able to take that tip and that clue and come back and fingers crossed that you know in the near future you know, your brother's gonna be found all right if there's anything we can do for you in the future you know and we'll come back up Thank next you. year if you need us to and we'll put you back on the, on the list and okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Today we are bringing you to Willimantic, Connecticut, where we are returning to the case of Robert Cavanaugh. And you can see the fence here. So see how we have a, have a fence very defined there around the water treatment plant, but not very defined here. Looks like there's a little one here. Um, I only know, I guess, what the, the case, you know, the, the court case pretty much says. Uh, Family-wise, I don't ask too many questions. I just want to find it for them. You right. know what I mean? We are entering some dangerous waters today with rapids behind us. We uh, started off our morning that we're going to take you back to right now where we ended up putting in right near a high water dam that had our hearts racing. This is one episode you are not going to want to miss.